I'm all in. This is the newest casino in Vegas. The name is Resorts World and that's where I'm playing right now. What's up everybody? We're inside Resorts World, brand new casino in Las Vegas. Poker room is great, the staff is great. They made me really feel like home here. I know that's weird to say about a casino, but that's how I felt. And I strongly advise you to check this place out when you're in Vegas. My name is Romulo Doria and I'm the founder of Poker Profit Channel, the first poker vlog created to help you become a better poker player. I buy in for 800 in the 2-5 game. One of the first hands, a hijack raises to 15 and then I look at pocket kings in the cutoff. Great start, I'm gonna 3-bet here for sure. 45. I 3-bet to 45 and then surprisingly the button calls the 45, which is great. I'm almost sure I'm beating him, because any aces he would 3-bet. Hijack calls the 45, and 3 players see the flop. The flop comes king, 10, deuce, with 2 diamonds. I flop top set. Hijack checks to me. I'm not gonna check here. There are too many gut shot pairs and flush draws in their ranges, so I'm gonna bet for value. I bet 65, little less than half of the pot. Button folds. Hijack calls. The turn comes a 6 of clubs, complete blank. Doesn't change nothing. He checks to me again. I'm gonna keep betting. I bet 105. 105. He calls again. The river is another blank. Five of clubs. Doesn't change nothing again. He checks and I put him all in for 290 total. I tried to act fast here so maybe he could find weakness on me and call with some combinations of 10x or even a pocket pair. I'm pretty much polarizing as I played here. Either I'm gonna have a great hand like the one I got or I'm gonna have a missed flush draw or a missed straight draw, something like that. Cause if I have a pocket 10, like 10x for example, I'm gonna tend to check here instead of going all in. He thinks for a long while and unfortunately decides to fold. At least we start scooping a good pot. I put my name in the 1-3 and 2-5 list. The 2-5 seat was the first one that became available. But I decided to go to the juicy 1-3. I buy him for 400. First hand, I'm in the middle position with queen jack offsuit. I raise to 12. Three players call. Four players see the flop. The flop is a good one. Jack 10-7 with two hearts. I have the queen of hearts. Big blind checks. I'm gonna bet here. I see bet 30. Only the big blind calls me. Two players see the turn. The turn is a king. He checks to me again. I think it's a good spot for me to check back here. I still have open-ended, I'm winning many combinations of his hands, and I might open space for him to bluff, so I check back. The river comes a 7 of diamonds, shouldn't change much. He bets 40, and I'm gonna follow the plan here and call his bet, and he shows queen 9 of diamonds, making us straight in the turn. I actually saved a lot of money in that check back in the turn, I believe so. Next hand, I'm in the under the gun, with ace 10 suited. I'm gonna raise here, I raise to 15, 5 players call me, no one called? Everybody wants to make the block. I, I, I have to, I have to, I have to show that. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. <laughs> I was thinking about it. <laughs> okay, hit me. Hit me more than him. And hit him. The flop comes a beautiful one. 10-7 king with two clubs. I have middle pair and nut flush draw. I could either bet small here or check. And I decide to check this time everybody checks behind the turn comes a seven of spades not a great card i decide to check again and then the cutoff bets 35. if i felt weakness on him i could consider check raising here but that really sounds like a value bet and out of the value bets that he has i think more than half of the times he's gonna have a better hand than mine at least for now if i don't hit my flush so i decide just to call under the gun plus one calls as well so three players see the river, and then the river comes, the card we wanted, the eight of clubs. So now I don't think I should check here, especially because the board is paired. So I wouldn't have so much value in check raising in case someone bet. So I decide to lead out here. I lead out to $75. Under the gun plus one folds Flush. and cut off calls. In case you're not subscribed yet, consider doing the mission of this channel is helping you become a better poker player and let's move on with the episode and he mucks next hand i have king nine offsuit from the cutoff i got two limpers before me 
One of the limpers is the under the gun. Here I'm gonna tend to call more than raise to punish them. Because I don't think my hands is much better than the average hands that they have. Especially the under the gun. But here I decided to raise. I raised to 20 in position. Small blind and the under the gun call. So three players see the flop. The flop comes king, 7, 3, rainbow. Great flop for me. Small blind leads to 30. Here I see no good reasons to raise. I'm gonna just call, control the pot and play in position. The river comes a 6 of hearts. Small blind checks to me. And here, if I was playing against someone that is capable of check raising many things, I would definitely just check back and control the pot. But because I saw that guy and he didn't look like a pro or a rag, he looked like a recreational player who was just there to have fun. I decided to bet for value here. I bet 40. Small blind calls. And then the river comes a 10 of clubs. Small blind checks. Yeah, okay, you check. check I feel out. I feel I feel I feel better. Check. Oh my god, I'm so glad you checked, man. And he shows pocket sevens, making a set in the flop. If he was a good player, he would be able to extract a lot more money from me. But I'm glad that he's not. Next hand, I'm in the middle position with 10-9 suited, button straddle to 6. I decide to call and play this hand against many players, which is a pretty good hand to play 5-handed. Five, 5 players see the flop. The flop comes Jack, Deuce, Ace with 2 diamonds. I have a flush draw. Big blind leads 10. That's a clear call here for me with a flush draw. Other 2 players call. 4 players see the turn. The turn is a 6 of diamonds. I hit my flush, but I still should be cautious about someone having a bigger flush than mine. Big blind checks, I check as well. Then the cutoff bets 30. Big blind calls, and here I think if I just call, I will let the cutoff have control of the hand. So if I just call and check, he can be able to check back with many things that I'm beating. So instead of just calling, I decide to check raise. I raise to 100, cutoff calls, big blind folds. The river comes a king of hearts, doesn't change much. And here I have two options. I can check and call for any of his bets or I can bet and fold. And here I decide the second option. I decide to bet and in case he shoves, I'm gonna just fold the hand because I don't think he's gonna be able to do that without the flush. So that's what I do. I bet 125 and he snap calls and he shows king eight of diamonds, having a better flush than I had. I'm still winning something at this table, little less than 100. Next hand, I'm in the big blind with pocket queens. Two limpers, I'm gonna punish. I raise to 25, cause this table was seeing a lot of flops. Okay, I want you to call and check it out. I want you to call and check it out. Man, you gave the offer you gave the the, the offer? I accept the offer, the board comes all bricks. And I take the pot. Thanks for the 25, bro. <laughs> I change seats, most likely to get a better table footage, but I'm still at the same table. And I see pocket threes. It's a straddle. The hijack is new to the game, so he had to post three. I raise to 30. Hijack calls. He seems like a careless guy for his money. Button calls as well. Three players see the flop. The flop comes 10, jack, 6, with two hearts. This flop hits a lot of things. I don't think if I see bet, it's gonna pass too many times. So I rather just check and pretty much give up the hand if they bet. That's not what happens, they check. The turn is a deuce of hearts. I have a pair and a flush draw. There will be some times I'm gonna be winning here and I still have a plan B of the flush draw in case they have a better pair than I do and don't have the flush. So I'm gonna bet here to try to take the pot right there. I bet 55, hijack calls. And then the button re-raises to 155 and I fold. Next hand I'm in the big blind with jack 10 suited, button straddle to 6, small blind and under the gun plus 1 calls. I could go with the call here, but I rather raise and be the aggressor of the hand with jack 10 suited here. So I raise to 41, they all fold and I take the pot. One round after this hand, I get pocket jacks from the big blind. 3 player is limp, small blind completes, I'm gonna raise here for sure. I raise to 28, little bigger than I would normally do, 
But my image at the table is of a guy that punishes limpers. So I think many times they will call me here. The button calls, 28. And surprisingly, small blind calls as well. So three players see the flop. The flop comes jack, queen, six with two diamonds. Great flop for me. This flop hits a lot of their range too. So I'm gonna see bet here. I see bet 41, little less than 50% of the pot. Button calls. Small blind folds. The turn comes an eight of clubs. 910 gets there, but he's not gonna have 910 so many times. But many times he will have a combination of queen X or flush draw in a gut shot. So I'm gonna keep betting here. His effective stack is 300. I bet 105. <laughs> he goes all in in a snap call. The river is an ace. He shows ace king. I show the jacks and I scoop. Four hours and six minutes of game. Great session overall. If you follow these tips, I can guarantee you that you will make more money playing poker. All right, guys, in this video, I'm gonna give you three tips that I can guarantee you that if you follow those three tips in your game, you will make more money playing cash game from now on. The first tip is stop trying to see every flop. What I see many people doing is always seeing their hand, limping, and expecting to see every flop. But guess what? If you have a good player in your right, or a player that is just, just got good cards, he's gonna raise the game in position against you many times, and you'll see yourself in a spot of calling out of position. Usually you're gonna miss the flop, the guy's gonna bet and you're gonna fold. So pre-flop, start playing tight aggressive. And what do I mean by that? So depending on the position you are at the table, play the same way you would play if you had aces, kings, queens, ace, king. Cause guess what? Texas Hold'em is a game that most people miss the flop. So usually the players that are the aggressors in the hand have the advantage of just see betting after the flop and taking most of the hands. So do that and be wise on which hands you're gonna play from each position. The second tip I have to give you is choose wisely which games and tables you're gonna play. And what do I mean by that? In poker, for you to make money, other person necessarily has to lose. So you should try to be wise on deciding who you're playing, who are you playing against. There will be some tables that you will sit at the table, try to find a sucker, try to find a fish, and you find none. So ask yourself, what am I doing here? What are you here for? If you're at a table that is full of sharks and your goal is to improve at poker, okay. So play against them and try to absorb what they're doing right so you can improve in your game. But if you're there for profit, there's nothing wrong with changing tables. There's nothing wrong with deciding to play in a certain game that is way easier for you to make money than in this game. So the mistake I see many people doing very often is not caring about where are they playing. And that's a mistake. Because the worse is the level of the players you play against, the bigger are your chances of making money and being more profitable at this game. So you should take close attention on which games are you playing and be strategic about it. The third tip I want to give it to you is be mindful about your bankroll and don't let yourself become fearful of losing your stack because guess what? Sometimes you will lose your stack. So when you're fearful about that, players can use that fear against you by raising more over you, putting more pressure on you. That's something I use myself on people. I usually want to put pressure on players. And when I see a player that is fearful about losing his stack, I love it because I can use that in my favor by putting pressure, by making bets, sending a message I'm gonna shove in the next street, which I'm, I might not even be willing to shove, but the message that I send is enough to make him fold. So be mindful about your bankroll and just play a game that you are able to lose your stack without still having money to pay your rent or to do your things. Otherwise, don't play poker because most likely you will lose this stack and people will use your fear against you. So there is no problem instead of playing 2-5, playing 1-2 because you just have $3,000 bankroll or a $2,000 bankroll or a $1,000 bankroll, which is not ideal, but a $1,000 bankroll, it is still five buy-ins in a 1-2 game if you buy in for 200. The ideal bankroll, in my opinion, for live cash game is 20 buy-ins. So let's say you play a game that you buy in with 500. So you should have $10,000 to be able to be unattached to your $500 buying. Cause I will give you an example. 
I'm a profitable cash game player for almost 10 years now. And a third of the time that I play, I lose. One third, one third of the times that I go to a casino, I lose. So imagine if every time I go, I would be fearful of losing my stack. I'm gonna lose my stack a third of the times. So embrace the variance at poker and use other people's fears against them. If you see someone that is fearful of losing his stack, use that in your favor. Exploit that person and make money over their leaks. If you're flush draw in a hand and you think that if you go all in, the villain will fold most of the times, and you still have 35% equity, guess what? Many times you should shove, you should try to make him fold. And in case he calls, you have 35%. Maybe if you have an over card to the board, you have 40%. So that's not bad, you know, that's a good play. That's a play that made a lot of money for me in poker and you can see many examples of that in my vlogs. And now I have a bonus tip for you. Whenever you're losing and you're feeling impatient and mad and you wanna just get your money back, my advice to you is stop playing. Don't play when your head is messed up. Don't do that. I play poker for many years now and I don't remember a session that I was playing like that and I made relevant money. It's actually the opposite. I remember many sessions that I played like that and I lost way more. So if you don't have your head straight, if you're not patient enough, if you're not in a good state of mind, just stop playing and you will get them another day. If you follow these tips, I can guarantee you that you will make more money playing poker. I hope you do. I hope you enjoyed those tips and I hope they help you improve your results at poker. And let me hear from you guys. Do you have any tips to provide to everybody? Something you learned and that you feel that you could share with us? Feel free to write in the comment section. I'm gonna read everything and hopefully learn from you too and see you next time. Thank you guys for watching. If you're not subscribed yet, consider doing. The mission of this channel is helping you become a better poker player and see you next time.